Hey, this is Mr. Peters, and this screencast is going to be the first of a series about carbon-based molecules. Molecules we're going to call macro molecules. They're big, huge molecules uh, in nature. Uh, they're produced by living things and consumed by living things. So in the image below, you can see a molecule of sucrose, which is table sugar, and then next to it is a molecule called sucralose. Notice that they're just slightly different. What's different about those two? You know what, they, they're both sweeteners, but we can't digest the molecule of sucralose because it has a couple of green, um, a couple of green atoms added to it. So a couple of chlorine molecules added to those double rings of carbon, and all of a sudden it tastes sweet, but we can't digest it anymore. So an artificial sweetener that's been modified a little bit. So what is it about macromolecules and the elements uh, that make them up. First of all, so here's your periodic table. You've seen this a million times before. We're really going to concentrate on about five different elements. Hydrogen being the first one. So we take living material, about 59% of the mass of living material is the element hydrogen. So we are mostly hydrogen, right? Well, lots of water involved, but I'm talking about macromolecules. Then we have oxygen, which is about 24% of the mass. Carbon, which is going to form the skeleton of the macromolecules, that's about 11% of the mass. Nitrogen, that's about 4%. And then we've got phosphorus and sulfur combined about 2%. Now, there are some other elements involved, right? You've heard of iron, iron poor blood, or iron's involved, or magnesium, or calcium in your bones, or sodium, and, and uh, chlorine. Um, those salt things and potassium is in bananas and it's good for you. So we have those those other elements involved. But these are the these are the six major elements going to be involved in the macromolecules of carbon. And it starts with carbon. So what is it about carbon? It's about carbon and having four bonds. So in this in this Bohr model of carbon, you can see that there are four electrons in the outer shell. The outer shell wants to have eight, but there's only four. So it's going to be able to form four pretty stable bonds that's going to allow it to uh, be the skeleton. So here's one, this is a molecule of methane, and it has carbon at the center, and then equidistant around it, it has four atoms of hydrogen, so CH4. And you can see that the angles are the same, forms really four beautiful stable bonds. Carbon molecules have three basic shapes. We have straight chains, branched chains, and then we have the ability to form rings. So here's a, a, a molecule that shows the straight chain. Now those dot, those those lines between the carbons and the hydrogen, so those represent bonds. You'll notice that there are uh, a couple of carbons that have two lines between them. That's because it can form double bonds. So that was a straight chain. Here's a branch chain, so it can it can fork um, and and still remain a macromolecule. Here's a ring. Here's vanillin. I like to put vanilla in my cookies, right? So that gives the cookies that vanilla-y taste. So that's a that's a ring uh, molecule. Um, they're based on monomers. So if we take a look at any macromolecule, they're based on things called monomers. So monomer means one. So here's some models. So here's a repeating unit. So this is one monomer, it's just, it's just a model. It's, uh, I, I stole some of Kennedy's beads. So here's uh, a monomer and here's a monomer. And I think you'll, they have different shapes and sizes depending on which class of macromolecules, but they're gonna be repeating units. So here's uh, a whole bunch of monomers that are put together and we call that a polymer. So poly means many, so here's a polymer. So like, here's another example, here's a picture of it. So here's a bunch of hexagonal rings, those would be like sugar molecules, that are repeated over and over and over again. So monomers, oops, I dropped my polymer, and polymers, so repeating units. Now this polymer is put together of not repeating units, but it's made of a bunch of monomers, small repeating subunits. So. Here's how they're put together. So we put them together with enzymes called polymerases through condensation reactions. So here's the green bean-shaped things. Those are monomers. And you'll notice that they're being put together by this purpley thing. That's an enzyme, and it built a polymer. So polymers are taken apart um, by uh, hydrolases, 
enzymes that chop things up back into monomers. So we have molecules that put things together and take things apart. We build monomers and we take them apart all the time. It's happening um, bajillions of times a second in your, uh, in your cells. So if we look at the illustration uh, there, the green is water. So remember, we're mostly water. But then we have some macromolecules. And then we have some other ions and small molecules. But we've got four classes of macromolecules. Uh, our cells are mostly protein, so 60-70% protein, depending on which cells they are. Then we have nucleic acids, things like DNA and RNA, and carbohydrates are going to be important. And finally, the smallest class is lipids. Now, this is not your diet. This is not the food pyramid. This is if we took a cell and we dried it out, what macromolecules would we find it in? Cells are mostly protein. And we'll get into the structures and functions of proteins in another screencast. But those are the, the four basic groups we're going to talk about. Proteins, uh, nucleic acids, carbohydrates, and lipids. So if we, if we put them together, uh, those are called condensation reactions, right? So here's a condensation reaction. I'm going to take a couple of monomers. So here's two monomers, and I'm going to put them together. That's a condensation reaction. So think about condensing. It's like this. We went from two molecules down to now we're at one. So it could condense the number of molecules. So when that happens, water gets removed in the in the chemical reaction. And we'll do some modeling of that in class. So we, we put them together condensations and we form bonds. So like these two monomers are now connected by this little plastic connector. That's like a covalent bond between these macromolecules. If we take them apart, pull them apart, we went from one molecule to two molecules. That's called a hydrolysis. And you'll see that in the illustration, water has been added. Now, this doesn't happen spontaneously. There are enzymes that are involved. So um, enzymes are proteins that um, break things down or build things up. They're the machinery of our cells. So four classes of macromolecules. Carbon's at the center of all of those molecules, forming skeletons. Um, and we put them together with condensations, and we take them apart uh, with hydrolysis. So uh, macromolecules, hope that helps. Mm -hmm.